Tiens pas, bon maillé. Tiens pas, bon maillé. Tiens pas, bon maillé. Oh, wait. This is an NXT. This is SmackDown. Oh, wow. Is this the best, most entertaining SmackDown in a long time, folks? Um, couple, one person I'd like to thank. Thank you very much, Techno Blue Ranger. Yes, he kind of stepped in when I had to work. Did, did a lot of my work, at least. Even though I left him terrible notes. Because, again, this was a happy Halloween. Oh, wait. It's Halloween. Oh, have red wine left? What's wrong with that? Wait a second. Yum, yum. There we go. That was good. It's always a drip left. And hopefully next week, I'll make my graphic. Tonight's Red Wine and Pizza Smackdown is brought to you by Yellowtail. This time it's a sweet red roux. Oh, it's interesting. And this is a red wine and pizza fr Friday Smackdown. I had a mystery Smackdown, mainly because a lot of people are stuck in Saudi Arabia. That sucks. I wouldn't want to be stuck there. That's terrible. That's not a good job. That's a very bad call. That's not a good call. Or Mystery Smackdown. Oh, also. That guy, the Techno Blue Ranger. He was in Stephanie McMahon's head. And the only reason I say that is because he got six out of nine uh, Crown Jewel matches right. Impressive. Probably better than I could do. And who knows about Dr. Tom. Dr. Tom hasn't been on in a while. I miss him, though. He brought class. But let's talk about our mystery SmackDown. Wow. Was it good. Starts off with a Brock Lesnar promo. Uh, Paul Heyman does his normal promo. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Um, Brock's, for the most part, Brock's upset because little Rey Mysterio beat him up with a chair after he beat Cain Velasquez. And by the way, if you missed the Cain Velasquez match, if you just watch SmackDown, you really see the whole thing. I thought it lasted five minutes. It was shorter. I don't know. Again, I didn't see it, but the Tenno Blue Ranger told me that was a five minute match. Who knows? And again, I'm wearing my Gargano Eat Champa, my hashtag DIY shirt, which is probably going to be a collectible now. I probably should stop wearing some of these shirts. This is pretty cool, though. It is. I'll tell you what, it is a comfy shirt, though. Um, I'm still waiting to get my Impact shirt, my OVE shirt for my nephews. He deserves that. I got him a Borderline shirt. Got the one, the WWE rule book. And I still have to figure out which Dragon Ball Z tank top to get him. So again, Brock is upset. Because Brock got beat up by Rey Mysterio, who had a chair. Fair to Rey Mysterio. But he beat up Brock with a chair. So Brock's quitting <laughs> SmackDown and going to Raw. So Monday night should be interesting. That should be pretty good. It's time to get some hydrating fluid. Mountain lightning. In my system as well. So after that, this took about a good 15 minutes. Though. It, was, it, was, it was entertaining though. It's hard to say Paul Heyman can do anything bad. That was Bailey versus Nikki Cross. I like Bailey's new theme. I like that. I don't know what it is. It sounds... I don't know. Sinister? A little darker. It's not, hey, Bailey. Ugh. 
Ah, I want to know. Will you be my girl? I don't know. But she was taking on Nikki Cross. Oh, Nikki. Oh, Nikki, you're so pretty. You don't understand. You take me by the heart when you when you when you start being crazy. <laughs> Terrible rendition of a song. You can't copyright violate me for that. And in fact, I only have I think twenty eight days left. So I think the twenty ninth of November I'm done. So that's good. That means I'll be able to live stream a lo lot more too. In fact, I might live stream some Ring of Honor because I think they have a pay per view in December. Everything else, I think. I'll live stream reactions about WWE. I have to be careful with WWE. They will zonk you. Just even mentioning you sometimes, I think. When New Japan is in January, Royal Rumble is. February or March? No, it has to be... That's January, too. Um, Ring of Honors. December. Impact is Day of One in January. So I'll be able to do some stuff. Impact. They almost don't care. Ring of Honor probably could care less, too. And then I wonder if AAA does anything. For the start of the new year. I know they did Triple Mania. I have to do another Triple Mania. That was just fun. But um, enough about what I have to do. Uh, it was Bailey versus Nikki Cross. Uh, Nikki Cross sets out with pink combinations. She had a roll-up, an alligator clutch, and a La Magistra. Nikki's trying to win quick. Um, so from the first part of the match until commercial. That's the one thing I like about AEW is that on the program I use, they don't have commercials, so you see the action through the commercials. Well, sometimes they just like, like I think for one AEW show, Cody Rhodes was trying to get a member of the audience to tell a joke. I got a joke! What's the difference between a piano and a fish? You can tune a piano but she can't tune a fish. Yes! Best joke ever. But enough about that and my terrible sense of humor. Um, Nikki Cross, for the most part, is in charge of the match until the commercial break. Uh, during the commercial break, we're told Sasha kind of interfered a little bit. Bailey's definitely the heel, though. Uh, Nikki Cross, she's just the best. Um, she got sent to the seal stuff, so I feel bad for her. Nikki Cross hits, hits the cross body onto Bailey. Sasha interferes a little bit. Uh, Nikki does the spot with Bailey when she gets her between the ring and the kind of can the the apron cover, whatever they call it. Uh, beats her up, beats up Sasha Banks, which is good. Boo Sasha botch. Um, there's some light profanity being used. His Fox was editing out. That's always good to hear. Um, there's a new finisher by Bailey. It's like a hammerlock face buster. That's good though, because I never liked the Bailey to Bailey to Bailey. That sucked. And I do like the fact that Nikki Cross kicked out of the elbow drop. The only person's elbow elbow drop you should never kick out of, well, is the Macho Man. It's the Macho elbow drop. Uh, so Bailey wins with a new finisher. That's pretty cool. I wonder if she has a name for that, though. But then, whoa! Shayna Baszler shows up! Uh-oh. NXT! NXT! And Shayna Baszler pulls a KO. She just beats up Bailey and Sasha Banks. Which, which is not much better. Sasha Bosch gets beat up. So that's pretty cool. Um, so Shayna Baszler shows up. Crowd goes absolutely bonkers. Uh, the commentary does mention uh, travel-related issues. Sami Zayn's there. Matt Riddle and Keith Lee show up. They don't believe that Sami has an NXT shirt. And in fact, he runs from them. Eventually, he runs the wrong way. Goes to the ringside. Oh, there's my cat. 
and he gets beat up for his efforts. <laughs> Sammy gets 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 beaten up by death by bro. Yeah, bro. Oh, Baskin is glory. Oh, Baskin is glory. And you can do the Seven Nation theme to anything. Oh, ho, bo, tom. Oh, ho, bo, tom. Oh, techno, blue ranger. Oh, techno, blue ranger. So that's pretty cool. I'll have to put up. I have to retell the story about, about Nick's Newell this episode, too. That's always fun. Um, it's the same thing as B Step. Then it's a Tyson Fury and Braun recap. Miz shows up. Uh, Miz for Universal Champ. Who knows? He's saying they're all stuck somewhere else. Then Tommaso Ciampa, the psycho killer, shows up. Ciampa, boom, aye. Ciampa, boom, aye. The next match we have is Tommaso Ciampa, one half of DIY. Taking on the Miz. Oh wow! Oh, and if I didn't mention this before, the Bailey Nikki Cross match was amazing. That was a surf and turf match. Now we go into wow, a really good match, and that's why I did screw up my my order. Is that we had Tommaso Ciampa taking on the Miz? Oh, wow, this is like dream stuff come true. Oh, Ciampa. I don't know. He was wearing tights. He should not wear tights. Tommaso Ciampa and a whole bunch of other NXT people, they have tiny legs. And I know they're, they're vastier legs, but they're just tiny, though. Like his calves are like the size of my forearms, which is kind of... Sad. Uh, Miz kind of takes control of the match, but Chomp is just vicious. It's like, whoa, Miz hasn't had a match like this in a while. Uh, Chomp uh, eventually eats some, some Miz kicks, as always. Um, the, the Miz, oh, wow, he's actually chopping. But of course, Chomp gets his comeback. Champa could not hit the power bomb. I don't know if he's not used to wrestling people the size of Miz. Because if you think about NXT, most of the people Champa's face are his size or smaller. Johnny Gargano, Adam Cole, they're smaller than the Miz. So Champa had problems getting Miz in the power bomb, more like a power botch. Uh, that was like one of two things. Which kept this from re really being a flaming on match. Um, what else? Oh, of course he reversed. Miss hit the figure four. And of course, Champer reverses the pressure of the figure four. Yep. Uh, eventually, Champa, he got enough of the fairy tale ending to make it seem realistic. Not as good as Shauna's fairy tale ending. Who was the woman wrestler in AEW on Wednesday? She had a better fairy tale ending than, than Champa did, though. In fact, I think Mandy Rose might do a better fairy tale ending than Champa did against the Miz. Again, he just might be not used to wrestling someone the Miz's size. Like you don't know how much strength he really needs. Like, well, this works with Johnny Gargano. Yeah, Johnny Gargano is half the size of the Miz. In fact, I think Candice LeRae <laughs> is a more appropriate analog to the Miz than Johnny Gargano. <laughs> That's terrible. But nonetheless, this was a really fun match. Tommaso Ciampa goes over. Amazing stuff still. This is another different turf match.
Then uh, Daniel Bryan was backstage. He saw Triple H and Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels is decked out in full NXT gear. He is one of their coaches. He talked about having a match. Okay, you'll go against our champ. Adam Cole, baby! Boom! Uh, next match we have is Fire Desire taking, supposed to take on Carmella and Dana Brooke. Carmella and Dana Brooke just got murdered by Bianca Belair. Whoa. Those two should be able to take on Bianca Belair. Like poor Dana Brooke. She, she was going to get TV time. But if it wasn't for Triple H and shot in the HBK, or H, yeah, Triple H and HBK, Dana Brooke would have gotten airtime. She has new hair color, too. <laughs> Looks kind of cute. Yeah, Dana Brooke. Hey, I'm single, okay? Come to Daytona Beach one day. I'll, I'll show you places you've never thought you could see. Or people you've, you've never thought you could see. People you probably didn't want to see. But again, and Dana Brooks and Carmella got, got beat up by Bianca Belair. Therefore, this brings out Rhea Ripley and Nixon Newell, the girl with the shiniest wizard, also known as Tegan Knox. Uh, this is funny because then I, then I thought about the time that I embarrassed the heck out of poor little Tegan Knox. Um, what happened? I'll tell the story. Because it's a funny story because it's actually the gif or the thumbnail, I think, for this video. I have to think about how to do this somehow. That might take more time than making this video. But the story is between Nixon Newell and the one and only Hobo Tom. I forget if I was wearing my hobo shirt. Maybe I... Oh, I, I think I was. But what happened for NXT live events like the first half hour, they do meet and greets, which is awesome. They haven't been good so far, but but they have to pick up eventually. And I'm still pissed at the one because I had a chance to get Candice LeRae's autograph. I would have dropped my pants, gone into the wrestling ring half naked, and I'd be arrested. But it would be so worth it. But. I digress. Let me talk about Nick's Newell for a moment. So, I, so I'm in line waiting at the autograph table. I hear Cassius Dono. Cool, he's been there a lot. Um, Rita Gonzalez is there. I'm like, cool. And then I hear, hear another name. I'm like, like Tegan Knox. I've heard that before. Where have I heard that before? I heard that. I forget where. But then the announcer said, She's the girl with the shiningest wizard. I'm like, no! There's only one girl with the shiniest wizard, and that's Nixon Newell. And in fact, that'll probably be my sister's birthday gift. I'll get a girl with the shiniest wizard t shirt. I got her a Princess Kimberly t shirt. Oh, wow. Gotta like pro wrestling tees. So, so it's my turn. I'm like, you're Nixon Newell. You're the girl, the Chinese wizard. She's like, uh, yeah. How do you know? You were the first woman's, cha or, 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 or you were in the women's division over at WCPW. I, I, I saw you on on the pay per views, and 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 you wrestled um on B B Priestley, and you were the, you were you were the best WCPW women's champion. And she's like, you remember that? And funny thing is, <laughs> next to her was was Kai Sono. Kai Sono was like laughing. He was doing everything he could to just not burst out laughing and to stay in his chair. The other end of the table was Marina Gonzalez. She's like, the heck's going on over there? And she's like, no, no, you, 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 want, you want to talk to me. So you don't want to talk to her. You you want me. And, but she but but Nix but Nixon Newell T T and uh, Tegan Knox. She was she was like red faced, 
and the kicker is if she walked into the store where I worked at wearing her wrestling gear, a t shirt that says the girl with the shiniest wizard, I'd be like, Hello, miss. What can I get for you? Uh, I'm probably stare at her butt because she's wearing like wrestling tights. I'd probably mention to my coworker, I'm like, Hey, is it like Halloween or like Mardi Gras? Like, wh- why is she dressed like a wrestler? So I'll tell you what, she, she had glasses on and regular clothes. Well, I'd have no idea who she was. She Again, she could walk into the store I'm at wearing her wrestling gear, a girl with the shiniest wizard t-shirt, and I'd be like, whatever. Although it would probably hit me in a couple of minutes. And then I'd be like, oh, selfie time. I don't care if I get fired or written up. I I, I earned that. But so, um, well, to get to the wrestling, I'm not, not that I told my story. Uh, Fire and Desire are there. They're waiting. Rhea Ripley and Nixon Newell show up. Uh, Sonya, like, kills Nixon Newell, though. Like, centri- like she, like, kneed her and, like, centered the barricade. That's terrible. You're already burying poor Tegan Knox. She already has two bad knees, folks. She just she, she doesn't she doesn't need anything else. She's had bad luck coming to NXT. And she had bad luck after she signed my autograph. Indeed. But but Sonya like beats up Nixon Null. Um Rhea Ripley's just like destroying Mandy Rose in the ring. Um, Nick Snow hits the shiniest wizard on Mandy Rose. I don't know. I guess she beats up Sonya Deville or Sonya Deville doesn't care anymore. But Nick Snow goes and hits the shiniest wizard on Mandy Rose. And then it's a standing Texas, Texas Cloverleaf. I think if she would have leaned down and wrapped her legs around her. Ooh. There's a visual image. Rhea Ripley wrapping her legs around Mandy Rose. Wait a second. I digress. But, um, yeah, she, uh, Rhea Ripley hit the standing Texas Cloverleaf on Mandy Rose, so I guess it's really short. This was a squash match, but overall, I don't care. This was a cheeseburger of a match. And the only reason is because the girl with the Chinese wizard who signed my paper was in the match. So I'm happy. Therefore, I guess a cheeseburger. And then they talk about uh, Triple H comes out because it's going to be the main event of the evening. Uh, Triple H comes out along with um, HBK. Well, I have a whole page of notes for that. Um, and Stephanie McMahon comes out. We made history. We are the first. I think they're actually the second. Why do I think Alexa Bliss and I want to say Carmella wrestled either in Saudi Arabia. Maybe it was either Yemen or the United Arab Emirates. I think this might might have been the second one. Might have been the first televised one. So they talk about how they're making uh, women's history, the first women's match in Saudi Arabia. I still think that was the second. I want to say it was Alexa Bliss versus it might have been Natalia. I just remember like they showed Alexa Bliss in like a full latex bodysuit. Maybe it was Natalia. I don't know. I don't know. You can, you can listen to to the Techno Blue Ranger talk about talk about the uh, Crown Jewel, which which I've heard actually wasn't necessarily that bad. Um, but then we get to the main event, the important stuff, because again, the ring announcement in this corner we have. Daniel Bryan and this corner the champion from NXT Adam Cole 
baby. Boom. Uh, it was really cool because even the crowd, the crowd definitely knows who Adam Cole is because when when Adam Cole had his name announced, Adam Cole, baby. So that'd be cool. I hope he comes to Daytona Beach for their live event in December. That'd be cool. Baby! Boom. Um, this is like a, a Ring of Honor rematch, I want to say. Kind of one of those WWE dream matches. I, 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 I swear they wrestle in Ring of Honor. Jeez, I'll say mid... Two thousands ish. I know is Adam Cole still had his devil horn, and he wasn't a part of Bullet Club yet. Well, I think he, yeah, he wasn't a part of Bullet Club, or he was the least Bullet Club Bullet Club member. I actually think it was before he was in Bullet Club. But he was still Adam Cole, baby. Baby! I have to do the baby part. Or it's not Adam Cole. It's either that, or I know they face each other. And it might have been, I'm thinking it's Ring of Honor. Again, you can leave a comment or email me or just like saying you're stupid. But I want to say it was Ring of Honor where these two met once. If it wasn't Ring of Honor, I know they've met before. They've met either in Ring of Honor, Pro Wrestling Gorilla, or Chikara. And I remember seeing a Daniel Bryan, the American Dragon Daniel Bryan, versus Adam Cole. And I want to say it was Free Bullet Club Adam Cole, too. So this is, um, again, that art, that Ring of Honor, I'll just say Ring of Honor rematch. Again, feel free to correct me. Oh, and by the way, hi, person's mother. Oh, hi, mom sign out there. That was cool. It was cool at one time to, like, write hi, mom, like, playing, like, football. Like, it was, like, cool to put hi, mom on your wrist tape. Whatever. But... This was a start off really as a classic Ring of Honor match style, a lot different than the WWE style. Um, a lot more classic mat wrestling going on. Daniel Bryan had some old moves. Um, I haven't seen him do the Mexican surfboard in a while. I like the Mexican surfboard. That was the first move I think I ever learned. I just saw that move. I'm like, that looks cool. Uh, then he did the Mexican surfboard sleeper hold, which is pretty cool. Um, then the sound of the suplex each other outside the ring. Ooh, that looked rough. Uh, then Adam Cole figure forward the head of Daniel Bryan, which, by the way, is legal in amateur wrestling. You can figure for the head, but you can't scissor the head. You can figure, you can scissor the body, but not figure for the body. Those are the old school rules in collegiate style kind of amateur wrestling. That was kind of cool to see. Um, well, so then we're trading forearms for a while. Daniel Bryan had the missile drop kick. Oh, the commentary even mentioned that. Wait a second, this shouldn't be that, that odd for Daniel Bryan. He was part of Nexus. Whoa. They mentioned Nexus. They've never mentioned Nexus. They tend to stay away from all those bad gimmicky ideas. Uh, Daniel Bryan, again, is just so amazing, though. Um, has it? <laughs> he did this a suicide dive, and he—I don't, I don't know how he twisted his body, but he like landed flush in the chair. That was awesome. I don't think he could do that again if he tried, or maybe he did plan that, and maybe he's just so good at it. Um, Daniel Bryan was just like enjoying today. He's like, oh, I'm so happy. Uh, the heel, the heel work, and my Adam Cole baby. He's definitely the heel because the crowd just loves Daniel Bryan that much. Although, I don't think there was a heel in this match. But I'll just say Adam Cole's baby was the heel. Um, then there were the yes kicks and the one yes kick. 
Looks like it took poor Adam Cole's head off. Wow. He's he way oversold that. Um, eventually, he did hit the Panama Sunrise and the last shot. Um, with that, Adam Cole, baby, won over Daniel Bryan. Then the rest of, and, and I'll, I'll tell you what, this was a flaming young match. Then the rest of NXT came in the ring. And, like, what's Angel Garza doing in the ring? Why is he on SmackDown? Indeed. Um, there were a couple other people. Um, Isaiah Swerve, something was there. The other Jobber McJobber was there. Who else was Adam Cole? There were a couple like NXT jobbers. You're like, what are you doing here? Why can't they bring like Candice LeRae? <laughs> oh, that roof would have gone off. <laughs> if like Gargano, LeRae, Ciampa, Undisputed, if like, it was, if it really was the big players, I think those were the only two now that I think about it. That's still too, too many. Um, but again, if you had like the NXT major players there. And by the way, just to correct the staff, that's the stadium for the Buffalo Sabres. The Buffalo Bills play in an outdoor arena. The home of the Buffalo Sabres. Dopes. Um, so for Survivor Series, which I'll be doing a review for, not live stream. I'll still have, I think, 12 more days or 13 more days until until being bad hobo's done. It's going to be Raw versus SmackDown versus NXT. So that should be a really good Survivor Series. I think it's going to be that Survivor Series that everyone has, has wanted to see in a while, too. So finally, we're getting some fan service. Yes. And I'll tell you what. That was SmackDown. This has been the best SmackDown in a while. And I'll say this was a surf and turf SmackDown. The only thing WWE needs to know how to do now. They've set the bar right now so high. I can... Unfortunately, only see it going down. Um, especially when the rest of the talent can back. So the rest of the talent are going to be held to a pretty high standard now. I'll tell you what, this was amazing. And that was SmackDown on a red wine and pizza Friday night. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And again, I'd like to thank the Techno Blue Ranger for showing up and taking care of things when I had to work. Um, everyone have a good night. There's no wrestling. I can rest. I have a party to go to actually tomorrow. And then we're getting late, maybe. And Sunday, I relax. I'll play Tuesday. My next video for the Monday Night Raw review. Tuesday might be a double with uh, Raw and Impact. We'll see. Everyone else, have a good night, and I'll see you guys.